Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. This is the latest Arsenal news and transfer news. The Arsenal striker hunt has started this January. Arsenal have contacted Juventus over a possible move for Dusan Vlahovic. And Arsenal also monitoring the situation on Victor Boniface at Balevacuz. And those two strikers look more likely and easier as they used to do for Arsenal as compared to Ivan Tony, who will cost in excess of £100 million. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well. Ivan Tony, difficult deal for Arsenal to do. Priority, of course, but it's a very difficult deal to do. However, we cannot get out of January without trying to sign a striker. It will be embarrassing. It will be bad. So Arsenal looking at these two. Dizan Blahovic, 50 million is what we're hearing in the rumors. And Victor Boniface could be um, a fee in the excess of 70 million euros. Of those two, where should Arsenal turn? Boniface is having a very good season in the German Bundesliga. Dizan Blahovic is on the decline in the Italian area, but we know the quality this guy possesses. I I want your thoughts. I want your, com uh, your comments as well uh, in the comment box below. Is it Vlahovic or is it Victor Boniface? Right. Let's get into it. First and foremost, Arsenal have returned for Dusan Vlahovic. He's a player that Arsenal have always, you know, were always interested in. We always wanted him. But uh, what happened in January 2022 was kind of... um. Uh, a turn off for Mikel Arteta and Edu. Remember, Mikel wants to buy players that are 100% invested uh, in the squad, you know, in, in the team. They're interested. He wants to bring in players uh, that are really, you know, sold on to the idea of this Arsenal process and rebuild process. So when we talked to Dzan Blahovic and he was not answering calls uh, and his agent was not answering our calls as well, Arsenal decided that probably uh, he's not sold on to um, the idea of joining Arsenal Football Club. And of course, there were so many reasons why Dizan never wanted to join Arsenal. Number one, we didn't have Champions League football. By the time, Juve did have you know, UCL. Um, and then the other thing, we were still a struggling side. And during that, d during the end of that campaign, Arsenal didn't even qualify for the Champions League. Well, that is because we didn't sign Dizan Blahovic or a striker, uh, but it was also because we were not ambitious enough. So, Arsenal are back for Dusan Vlahovic. They think this deal is um, a little bit doable and might be a little bit affordable, according to you know, according to sources. So, if they are willing to sell for around 50 million euros or even less than that, uh, we'll be talking about the price because um, they bought him at around 75 uh, million euros. That was in 2022. Fast forward in 2024, they could be selling him for around 50 to 60 million euros. So Juve will be willing to sell. Um, and all reports are saying that Juventus have a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a bad position uh, with FFP. They have been banned uh, from the Champions League for quite some time. They have faced a deduction as well. And that means that their financial situation is being watched very, very closely. So if Arsenal can actually pounce on this, um, uh, you know, on this situation, it would be advent, uh, you know, advantageous. Arsenal go in there with around 45 million. Juventus will obviously reject it. But when you go back with around 55, they'll be thinking twice. Do we actually make some money uh, you know, and put some money back in our, in our bank? Or do we actually, um, you know, remain on the verge of a very, very precarious, you know, financial fair play situation? So it's uh, it's one that is a, you know, a, 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 that is political as a deal. I don't think Juve want to sell. They are chasing Inter Milan. They think they can win the Italian Scudetto, uh, Scudetto this uh, this season, and they they are rightly so uh, to believe they are actually doing very, very well. But Arsenal have a massive opportunity we have a very very good opportunity right here uh with Dizan Vlahovic now I've, I've talked to a couple of Arsenal fans that think Vlahovic disrespected the badge disrespected the Arsenal badge and therefore he should not come closer to playing for Arsenal he should not come closer to sign for Arsenal ever again and that is where I personally disagree I think li listen Clubs will be rejected and uh, clubs are always rejected. I don't think Arsenal don't have interest in Mbappe and I don't think Arsenal never had interest in, in Jude Bellingham. But I, I'll tell you something. If Liverpool are rejected by Jude Bellingham, if uh, Manchester United are rejected by the likes of, uh, you know, Kylian Mbappe, every single club will be rejected by a, a player at one point in time. You either don't meet, meet his ambitions or you're not at the level and standard that the player wants to play at at the moment. But for me, we've got to be ruthless now. We've got to be... Um, we, we've got to act like a top club. And what do top clubs do? You act 
in your best interest. It is in our best interest right now to sign Dusan Bilhovic. It is in our best interest right now to go and get a top-level striker. And I think with Vlahovic right now, Juventus will not be able to charge above 70 million euros. And Arsenal uh, don't have that money you know, anyway. So if you're looking, about, you're looking at a long-term striker, a number nine, one player that you can rely on for goals, but is also within the price range that Arsenal can afford... It is Dusan Vlahovic. So whatever we do, whatever we uh, we talk about, Vlahovic is going to be um, a name very, very possible to join Arsenal this January transfer window. Um, so, listen, that is not the only player we are looking at. We are also looking at at Victor uh, Victor Boniface uh, at Balever Cousin. Victor Boniface is another Boniface actually, or Boniface is a young, another young striker that has burst onto the scene um, in Europe. Just like Victor Rosimen, he's having a very good campaign. So Osman had a very good campaign last season, and uh, we all know the story. Arsenal, Chelsea want to pay over one hundred million uh, in the summer to sign him. Victor, uh, Victor Boniface is a player Arsenal have asked about. And Balevacuzen are reluctant to sell, but it's a very, very interesting situation. So with, with Boniface, young, very, very, um, I think he's in form actually at the moment. He's really, really carrying a very, very good form. And if you brought him in Arsenal right now, you might have brought in one of the, uh, you know, the anointed strikers of the of the year 2023 2024 he's actually massively uh, doing very well but you've got to ask the question with uh, victor boniface how much is he going to cost surely more than dusan blahovic because his trajectory is going up and dusan blahovic uh, you know is going down so he's going to cost more than um dusan blahovic and arsenal are in a financial fair play position where we cannot spend huge amounts of money i mean we want to get the good guys we want to get tony we want to get uh, victor resman but why can't we we are in a financial fair play position where arsenal cannot spend a lot of money especially without selling now to be realistic and open are we going to sell players worth 70 80 million this january uh, I, I don't think Arsenal are going to do that. I don't think so. So we might get around 30 or 40 million in player sales uh, in January. And that means that we've got to focus on players that can come in at that right price for me, right? So Boniface, I like him. I really, really do. And the Nigerians will have to be very, very happy because Victor Boniface and Victor Rosimen, imagine having such a duo up front it's uh, it's crazy even if it's having victor resume you know starting and victor benefits coming off the bench it is absolutely crazy that is huge talent like very very you know big talent but i don't see this deal as one that can happen in january unfortunately it's not a deal Arsenal can, you know, do this and that, add a few uh, moves together, add a few puzzles together, and then it happens. It's a deal that's going to take some time. It's a deal that, for me, to be honest, it's going to um, happen in the summer. I'll be very surprised if Balevacuzen keep him beyond the summer. I'll be very surprised if they lose him before the summer, right? So, uh, I've already said this about January. It's a market where you have to do the doable deals and you know, walk away. It's about doable deals. Is Sahugi Rasi, uh, you know, available? Do the deal. If Dusan Blahovic is, uh, is is um available, you do the deal. You don't go into deals that, you know, are not doable unless you're Bayern Monik and you're signing a player like uh, Zaragoza and then you're leaving him, uh, you know, on loan. Y you can actually do that. But if you want to bring in players to have an immediate impact, Boniface is not one of those players. Like Balevacuzen, they're dreaming about winning the title. They're dreaming about um, going all the way, right? They're dr dreaming about doing something that Borussia Dortmund have failed to do last season, yet they, sem it, they came to very, very close. They're, doing, they're dreaming about something. Winning the Bundesliga, that is a right reserved for only Borussia Dortmund in the last 20 years and Bayern Munich. So if, if, if they're looking at that, right, they have one of the best young managers in the world, if not the best young manager in the world right now in, uh, you know, in Xabi Alonso, they cannot weaken his squad. Because at the moment, the chemistry that team has, the cohesion, there is no way you're going to you know, disrupt that by taking away one of their best players. 
you, you can't do that. So Victor Boniface is being monitored by Arsenal. I'm not saying we should not sign him. I'm saying it's not a doable deal in January. Unless it's one for the summer and Arsenal tracking him slowly but surely um, and trying to talk to the player and trying to talk to Balibakuzin so that by the time we get to the summer, the deal is already laid, uh, you know, laid well. I, I would agree with that. I would take that because top sides actually do that. You look at you know Madrid um, and how they really, really upgrade the, uh, the Bellingham deal quickly and early. I mean, it's a very, very good transfer strategy. But at the moment, Victor Boniface for January, I don't think that's a deal that's going to happen. So, uh, Zan Blachowicz, that is the advantage. That is the beauty about trying to sign him. He's available the price tag we can afford and Juventus are in a very bad financial situation Arsenal can take advantage of that I think I reckon I reckon we can even force Juve into doing a, a deal uh, where we bring him on loan we pay you know his wages we bring him on loan we pay his wages and then sign him on a permanent in the summer if it does well because Juve right now need every financially um, you know wise decision they can actually make and that could be a financially smart decision well st still talking about juventus uh, juventus are going to be quitting they pass it for thomas Partey, and the reason thomas Partey's last injury has been dreadful like really dreadful and you may think he won't be fit enough to actually propel the team into the position they want this campaign. So they are going to be quitting, and now they are looking at uh, uh, a couple of other players. I've I've seen there is um you know a Lazio player. I think it's Felipe Anderson. Uh, they are looking at. They are looking at other options, and they are also looking at cheaper options, right? Because they are looking at Felipe Anderson because his contract runs down in 2024 June. Thomas Partey's contract is still ongoing, and um. At the moment, I'll tell you something, Thomas Partey is still untouchable, you know, at Arsenal. Now, I'm one of those few people that have been absolutely ridiculously talking about Thomas Partey leaving. And I think I need to apologize to everyone on the channel and everyone that watches Arsenal and supports Arsenal. I've been a massive fool. We can't let go of Thomas Partey. If, if a club like Juve are trying to sign him, if, if the top clubs are actually eyeing Thomas Partey, there is something there. And I also think that one of the reasons that's why we're not scoring enough goals at the moment, we lack a player like Thomas Partey. We lack a player that is quick in, uh, in transitioning the ball. I think Declan Rice is a great player, but he's not quick in transitioning the ball. He's not quick in playing the ball into Gabriel Martinelli and playing the ball into, to, into uh, Bukayo Saka and the likes of Odegaard. So we need a player who's quicker when Arsenal get the ball back. Can we get those players, you know, those white players on the ball as quick as possible? And if we do that, can then, um, you know, probably we shall solve our goal scoring problem. So Thomas Partey uh, won't be joining Juventus. They are pulling out. They think uh, his, his, his injury uh, track record is actually something to be scared about. And it is something to be scared about. But for Arsenal... Until the end of the campaign, we, we, we'd rather keep him. We really, really would rather keep him. So um, I want to talk about a few other striker updates. Number one is Eric Maxim Chupomoting. Now, when I was doing my um, realistic targets for Arsenal, I talked about Eric Maxim Chupomoting. And I was also talking about uh, him on, um, uh, I think I was talking about him on the Glenn Kitely, everything, you know, everything Arsenal channel. And I said, if Arsenal don't have a lot of money, to spend on a striker, go to Bayern and get Eric Maxim Chupomoting. He is not a, f a fox in the box. He is not a lion. But he's better than what you have in terms of putting the ball into the back of the net. That is number one. And also, he's sharing those characteristics of striker longevity. It, it is something that uh, we, we have seen more commonly uh, with strikers now. Benzema, Lewandowski, Eric Maxim you know, Chupomoting. Look, strikers are blossoming late, right? They're becoming much better uh, in the later, er, you know, in the later years of their careers. So Chupa Moting, you look at his finishing now. You look at the number of goals he scored uh, for Bayern when Lewandowski actually was, you know, ha had gone before Hurricane coming in. And you're like, if he brings that kind of form, if he brings that kind of finishing to Arsenal right now, 
that is actually what we need, right? Now, he's not a high-class profile striker, so most of you might actually remember him at Stock City. But actually, before coming to Stock City, he had had a very good spell at Schalke Offer in Germany. And then he, got, he goes to PSG, it doesn't work out, and then he comes to Bayern, where he's been predominantly back up as a player, but he's done well. Hugo Ekteke as well is another player that has already been sounded out by a few Premier League clubs. And Arsenal, again, we are not involved in the Hugo Ekteke, um, you know, story. I think we should be. I think we should be looking at Hugo Ekteke. With, we, we should be looking at uh, this, you know, th th these players. Loan deals, that is what we want to do. Cheaper deals, that is what we want to do. Um, you know, strikers that can come in and, you know, change the way we play and probably, uh, you know, increase the sharpness. In, you know, in front of goal. That is what we are looking at. So Hugo Ekteke and Chupo Moting are players in the market. Um, Ekteke is wanted at Crystal Palace and Chupo Moting is wanted at Man United. Can you believe, right? They've just spent money on, uh, on uh, Rasmus Harlan and now they're looking at Chupo Moting, which means that that's, um, that, that's a player there. Right. So I, I would go for Chupo Moting, honestly. Whether Man United want him or not, I would still go for Chupo Moting. But the striker hunt has begun. Let's see on which striker do we actually end.